Let me tell you about the history of Manning. It's located in the southern part of Angelina County between two rivers that really define its boundaries. It's about three miles south of Shawnee Prairie and about 10 miles from Huntington, I'd say 20 miles from Lufkin and about 120 miles from Houston. So to say the least, it is remote. The first sawmill was established there about 1867. And then the Carter brothers, along with G.A. Kelly came along and they formed the Carter Kelly Lumber Company acquired several thousand acres of virgin longleaf pine timber. It was enough to supply a very large southern yellow pine lumber sawmill for many years. Carter Kelly Lumber Company then built a town to support that mill, and that town was Manning. And it actually built and owned everything, including the churches, the store, the school, the jail, the hotels, two picture shows, and certainly the mill manager's home, which we're now calling Mansion on Sawmill Lake. Mill Pond was built first because it was one of the most critical components of a sawmill. It was necessary to float the logs into the sawmill and provide water for the steam engines. Carter Kelly Sawmill and Lumber Company could actually cut several million board feet of lumber annually and they shipped it all over the country. The Shreveport, Houston and Gulf Railroad, which many people call the Shove Hard and Grunt Railroad, was built to service that industrial complex. It of course brought in most all the supplies and equipment and it carried out the finished lumber. All the logs had to be cut in the woods and dragged by mules or, or oxen to a railway track and then hauled by the train and dumped into the mill pond where they would float until they were cut into lumber. The sawmill at Manning actually burned several times, once in uh, 1912 and again in 1916. And it was rebuilt each time. And then the mill burned again in early January 1935 cause of the fire wasn't really ever determined, but it was suspected to be arson. And this time the mill wasn't rebuilt, probably because all the timberland had been cut over. Many of the sawmills in the area had mysterious fires, and so became the saying, cut out, burn out, and move out. And after Manning burned out, people moved out. Most of the houses were sold to a Mr. Tyre. He tore them all down and he shipped the lumber all over Texas. Most of the salvageable sawmill equipment was moved to Camden, Texas, where the Carter Company had another mill, and still does. The schools and the stores were all closed. Manning had been a grand place, but it became a pile of rubble and an ash heap overnight. In 1929, my mother and father had moved to Manning to teach school. They had about 300 students, and I think there were seven teachers in the white community, and the black community also had a school. Well, when the mill burned in 1935, the school had to be closed, of course, because everybody had moved away. My mother and father then moved up to Shawnee Prairie, and began farming and buying and selling cotton. And then in 1941, Mrs. W.M. Gibbs, who was the mill manager's wife and now the owner of the town after Mr. Gibbs died, decided to sell it to my father. So we moved into the old house, as we called it, a few months after I was born in 1941. I had two older brothers, Morgan and Don, and a younger brother, Tom, who was born in the house, and a sister, Judy, who still lives at Manning, on the hill where the Bonner Hotel used to stand, and Judy and her husband will be managing this property as a bed and breakfast. When my family moved into this old house in 1941, it had electrical and plumbing fixtures, but it had no electricity and no water. Those had all been generated by the sawmill, and when it burned, they, of course, went away. So it wasn't until about 1950 that the electricity was actually restored to the house. After uh, we kids were all gone off to college, or married, moved away, my parents then moved out of the old house and into a new brick home across the road because it was much easier to maintain for them. The old house remained vacant and it deteriorated over the next 15 years until I began the process of restoring it and finally secured a historical marker and designation. My son, who's a judge in Lufkin, and his wife, who is an assistant U.S. attorney, lived in the house for about 10 years and then decided to move back to Lufkin in order to avoid that long drive out to Manning every day. So I, uh, along with my sister Judy, have decided that the house would best be maintained as a place of hospitality and rest for those who would come to visit Manning in all of its history. And I hope that you will.